so I've been a little sick so I don't want to talk haven't wanted to talk on these but today we got uh, as you'll see in this video our garden recovered a new garden put in um, all mulched four to six inches of wood chips cardboard um, it's been great We've, I've I borrowed some equipment from work um, I had this huge bamboo pile starting to push out I pushed that all in I'm gonna burn that and open up that land again I got a bunch of brush piles moved out my lumber yard organized today so I'll take you guys around and kind of show you what's going on my buddy Colby even came over to stop by and help out Matt came over to stop by and help out praise God it's been an absolute blessed day and uh, thank you to my oops thank you to my boss too for letting me use the equipment literally I've gotten more done today with that piece of equipment than it would have taken me all summer, all fall, and spring to do. So it's been just a huge blessing, a huge help. Um, the latest thing is my uh, septic tank was built up kind of like this weird Burmy thing here. Um, it was like that when we bought the place. I'll try to get you a better. Okay, so you can see it's like they dug out the septic, which I believe that's my lid there. But then they just left it all mounded, and of course, the last two years we've been fighting nasty weeds right here because I can't mow it. So, my buddy's like, hey, why don't we just cut into that and take that out? Where do you need this filled? I said, funny you ask, I want to put a second driveway in over on the side of my barn so I could park my trailers and stuff. And so now we're going to have a bunch of extra fill to start building that up. So, just... Everything has been absolutely blessed today, and it started off with a phone call from a from a brother in Christ, and a, some prayers, and just man, God is good. So I'm gonna do some videoing of around here, but I gotta go give this guy a hand here in a minute. So I'll talk to you later.
Sunday. So yesterday we got all that work done. Uh, you've seen some of the video of us being able to use the little MT-85 Bobcat to spread wood chips and uh, recover my garden, create a new garden area. So I'm going to take you through and I'm going to show you some of the finished work of that. But we leveled this off nicely so I can at least plant some grass there and mow over it for now. Um, new garden plot. This is where our leech lines are, so it's got sub water. So we'll probably plant peppers and stuff like that here. Then over here by the garage, we finally cleaned off this stupid thing of dirt. It's a bunch of sumac. And we started to level this area back here. That's gone. So we're able to get some of this filled in. This whole thing was down like this. It's hard to tell in the video. So yeah, you can get back here. You can see a little bit. This is totally indented right in here. So we're, we're going uphill. So it's nice to get some fill in here. And uh, it's just less that I gotta have to do later when I wanna actually flatten out from about the rabbit there down and kind of up so I can park trailers here. And that thing was kind of like an unexpected, hey, we have to have some place to put this fill. Where are you gonna put it, you know? So it worked out good and it was perfect. It's gravelly stuff that's used for driveways and whatnot. Um, now I need that much less. So let's go check out the bamboo. So on the back side of our gardens, I had the pigs in this area, got an apple tree here, and they rutted this up really, really heavy. And so I had to go through and re-spread, um, kind of re-level the, the soil. And then I was able to spread the wood chips and I got to rake it all level. So some job for the next week. Uh, we do get our cow this coming week, so that'll be, this will be done this week at some point. But uh, just another small thing I was able to do. Oh man. There's all these flies on this. Gross. So this has been our bamboo patch. And uh, that's right, where that dirt circle is here, all the way around, was all bamboo, creeping bamboo. It's a, a Japanese knotweed. It's extremely invasive, it just takes over areas. So I was able to scrape this whole pile together and reclaim this, this much land so far. We're gonna burn this some point this week. We'll reclaim this whole section here. I bet you it's a quarter, or eighth of an acre or so. But I did all the way around here. It, it was a years I've been fighting to try to just mow around and keep it in. But all of this has been just lost land. And now we're going to regain. We'll add it right back to the field. So more, more land and more grass to feed our, our cows and cattle and whatnot. Look at these things. This is how these start. Okay, Japanese knotweed. This is a root ball. And they start off, they look like asparagus. So they come up in these little pink, pink tubers. And uh, that's how it begins. It looks pretty and innocent, but it is anything but. These things get big and they're just ridiculous. So we were able to get them, hopefully before they really started heavily. This kind of goes into our woods. We're gonna have our pigs clear this land this year. And so eventually it will extend our field right back through this whole area. It'll come down, it'll follow the far wood line. This is about a, I think there's three acres back here just wooded like this like that. So we're going to utilize our pigs to clear this for us 
and in the years in between we're gonna eat really good pork and then maybe we'll end up keeping pigs just for because we like the, the meat after that but in every aspect of our land there's stuff that has to be done animals are the best way to go sometimes we need some sort of machinery or equipment to really just get it back to where we need it and uh, you know God's given us really good minds and stuff to make certain things, to expand on things, some medications and stuff, and some equipment is no different. Um, if we're blessed enough to be able to use something to, to reset and get back to kind of where we can manage it again with animals and whatnot, then that's great. Um, they actually did a study in Norway, I was just reading, in 2014, um, utilizing pigs to eradicate Japanese knotweed. So, I mean, they've, they've like done paid research to figure this stuff out using chemicals and, and machinery and all kinds of stuff that has basically failed. And pigs were really successful. When they put pigs on it, if it didn't, it was like eradicated. And so we might have been able to just put pigs there, but that stuff has been, it was here before we bought the house. So probably eight years of just dried bamboo sticks in there and my father-in-law was pretty smart about it he said you should just burn that stuff and I, I said I don't know about that um, I've got a nice mulberry tree here it's one of the biggest mulberry trees I've ever seen matter of fact that's a mulberry tree and it produces every year I mean it's the biggest one they're usually little shrubby bushes but that's what they'll grow to and that's a good hard wood so I wanted to keep that I don't I, I want to try to not like destroy that so I'm hoping our fire that we have for this does minimal damage to that guy. Um, and then we're gonna have our pigs on here probably for an extra week or so, uh, maybe even two weeks, just to make sure this stuff stays down. And then we'll keep moving them through this brushy, brambly stuff. Uh, there's more, this is that Japanese knotweed, that's what it does. It just takes over and then there's no room to walk or anything. So we'll see how the pigs do on that side of it. And uh, we would know whether they would have been okay over there or not. But, yeah, this summer we will find out. All right, and then next, next we got logs all the way around our pig pen on the bottom to make sure they can't push out and under. And we went all the way around. So these are just spruce logs removed from my property. Um, some old lumber I took, I ended up getting from work and uh, we just made use of them to be sure that we got no escapees from our training training pen. So they go all the way around it. We get pigs in about two weeks and uh, they'll be in here probably about a month or so. But yeah. So this was a huge thing as well as I got a bunch of brush piles out of the center here. They're not there anymore so you can't see them. But this is gonna be the first two paddocks of the pigs, and then I'm gonna take them over to that area to clean that bamboo. And then I was able to even organize my log yard a little bit better. Uh, so I got everything up off the ground for the most part, and um, logs where I can actually cut on them. My pile of rounds are already done, ready to split up. And right in front of my log yard, or I'm sorry, my lumber rack, uh, cleared. There was a bunch of logs sitting over here. I, anytime I go to get into them, it kind of got my way, so you can see the marks where they're gone. They were sitting in there for all year. It's kind of being a pain. So now everything's mostly up off the ground where I can start to saw on it, get it cut up into these kind of rounds and splitting. Uh, you know, good summer work. And, uh, Plenty of wood to keep going. And if I ever needed to have some milled up, they're fairly accessible to grab. And then having this secondary garden close to the house finished was phenomenal because, like I said, our leech lines are over here. Um, I don't like mowing. So now I've got an eat much easier square to mow around opposed to some small oval. And uh, 
we'll end up doing peppers and stuff here, but this is a awesome secondary garden size. And who knows, maybe even as I get older, this becomes the primary garden. I don't know. What I do know is that have an extra garden space this time in this, this kind of environment that we're living in now is just a blessing. So I believe that's mostly it for what we got done yesterday. It was a lot and it would have taken me by hand many, many weeks, if not months. And uh, thank you to Matt and Colby for helping me out and uh, my boss for helping me borrow some equipment. Um, but uh, mostly, man, just I gotta thank God. I mean, he's just there for me from that morning, the night before praying, Lord, get me up early. Woke me up bright and early, talking to a brother right away, praying with each other. Um, and then the whole day just went blessed. It was incredible. So all the glory to him. I couldn't do any of this without him. I, I didn't have the help, the energy, or the uh, ability to do that. And yet he made it happen. So it, it's just, it's incredible. All the glory to God. But um, that was this week, mostly yesterday. Work, work was going really well. Um, had a busy week there too and uh, so we just keeping things moving forward so this coming week we've got to make up some water systems we've got to get ready for our cow on Friday it might I think we're looking at goats tomorrow so I might see about getting a goat or two I don't know we'll find out <laughs> the neighbor kids just got here and uh yeah, so another busy work week. Again, I'll try to kind of capture some of that stuff as I'm, as I'm doing it. Um, I want to do some more actual videos on stuff like how-tos, uh, but then, and I'll add those in there. But right now it's kind of simply like, hey, here's my week and what's going on here. Um, and if you like that kind of stuff, man, click like and follow along. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, if you don't, I hope that you find what you're looking for. God bless you all. All right, bye.